the farmer and the cranes. Some cranes made their feeding grounds on some plowlands newly sown with wheat. For a long time, the farmer, brandishing an empty sling, chased them away by the terror he inspired. But when the birds found that the sling was only swung in the air, they ceased to take any notice of it and would not move. The farmer, on seeing this, charged his sling with stones and killed a great number. The remaining birds at once forsook his fields, crying to each other, It is time for us to be off to Lilliput, for this man is no longer content to scare us, but begins to show us in earnest what he can do. If words suffice not, blows must follow. So the farmer and the cranes, so essentially what's happening here is the cranes <clears throat> are feeding on some plow lands that were, were newly sown with wheat. So the farmer had just been out there, spent a lot of time on the hot blazing sun and the elements and, 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 uh, and sown, you know, these seeds of wheat. And he, you know, he wants to get a good, have a, have a good harvest, but he, you know, the cranes, cranes are kind of taking away from the harvest a bit here. So the farmer, uh, brandishing, which is a showing, carrying, you know, uh, an empty sling, he, he sort of, he, he ran after them by the terror he inspired. And then, then they like got, got scared. They're like, Oh, there's this farmer. He's got a sling, you know, and he's, he's probably got some rocks in it and he can, you know, he can kill us. And then, so they ran off or they flew off rather. Um, but then, but when the birds found that the sling was only swung, swung in the air, which means that, you know, the way I, I take this is that it, it didn't have any rocks in it, you know, um, like the biblical story, uh, um, with, um, a rock and the big giant, um, so, uh, the, um, just the fact that, um, these birds, uh, a uh, uh, David, excuse me. Why did I even just had a mental hiccup? David and Goliath, of course. Um, yeah, with the slingshot and all that. Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, he took out Goliath with with I believe it was with a stone. Um, I haven't heard that story in, in decades, but yeah, I mean, it's it definitely comes back from childhood. Just sort of the overall gist of it. You know, David was really small. Goliath was huge, and he had a slingshot and, and this and that and and, and so. Here, this is the farmer. It's sort of a twist on that a bit because the farmer has a sling, but then these cranes see that he doesn't have any any stones in it. it doesn't have any, you know. So they're not scared of it anymore. They're like, "What's he gonna do with that?" It's like, you know, um, you know. So he, um, the farmer, saw this. He saw that the cranes wouldn't move. Like they they would come back out there, and they would they would chow on this you know, on the, the, the plow lands and just eat whatever they wanted. Um, you know, eat, eat all this wheat that's, you know, that he, he, he's trying to harvest. And then, so we got, he got mad and he's like, you know what? I'm going to put some stones in this thing. So charged his sling with stones. So basically put stones in this sling. And then he's like, fucha, fucha, fucha. he's just like killing a bunch of them. Just like David and Goliath style. Just, just taking out, taking out eyeballs and knocking them dead. Um, so the remaining birds, the ones that lived, that didn't get hit by rocks, uh, flying rocks, they, they forsook his fields, kind of alliteration with the FF forsook his fields. Um, so when you forsake somebody, like you, 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 you turn your back, like you, you, you go the other way, you know, like, why have you forsaken me? Like, I think we've, I, I, I remember that phrase, um, you know, uh, and that, that phrase uh, I've seen in the Bible uh, when I read it uh, years back, and um, and I just remember that phrase from like biblical stories, um, in that realm, just because that's sort of the the, the way that they spoke, um, at least in the translated you know uh, version that I read. Um, so here I think it means basically just turn their back, even though it wasn't like forsaking a person, like you know um, upsetting. You know, there's everyone's upset, and then you just turn your back on somebody. This is like forsaking, where they just turn around and like leave. So they forsake, forsook his fields, crying to each other. It is time for us to be off to Lilliput. I'm assuming that's back where they they live. Uh, their 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 source, their like home, hometown, as it were. Uh, for this man is no longer content to scare us. He's not just okay, like content, like relaxed. He's not like he's not okay just scaring us. Like now he's he's killing us. Like we. We didn't mind 
you know, coming back over and over and over again because we knew he was just scaring us. So we didn't believe him, you know. Um, and uh, it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. That's another popular uh, fairy tale from from childhood. Uh, and you know, it's like this boy keeps crying wolf, and then so the I think the farmer keeps I forget I forget the the specific story, but the boy keeps crying wolf, and then you know they I think the villagers keep you know coming coming to save him, and then he's just kidding and he's all laughing and stuff and he's like i'm just kidding and then he keeps crying keeps doing it and so finally a wolf really comes or a wolf pack really comes and then he's crying wolf and then they think he's kidding so they don't go and save his life and like he dies like the wolf's just like tearing to pieces i i i'm totally you know boulderizing you know uh destroying that story i'll probably try to make up for it by putting a video on uh, the boy who cried wolf and some of those fairy tales but I think that that's, you know, sort of what happened. But anyways, it's somewhat similar because they keep coming back and they keep coming back because they, uh, cause you know, the, the, um, the farmer doesn't, doesn't have any rocks in his sling. So, but now it begins to show us in earnest, you know, in, in all honesty and all sincerity and all reality and in all like behavior, show us in earnest what he can do and what can he do? Well, he can kill you if you keep coming back into his his uh, plow lands, his plow lands that have been newly sown with wheat, and and keep keep eating his his wheat and uh, and preventing it from being a, a a fruitful harvest. If words suffice not, blows must follow. So blows, not wind blows, like blows, like punches and rocks coming at your face, like injuries and potentially death. I mean, uh, Aesop certainly. Um, they're, you know, I think a lot of these old style stories, you know, they're just very raw. You know, even the Bible, I mean, even a lot of these biblical, I mean, even a lot of these uh, religious texts, you know, they're just raw. And they talk about death and they talk about life, death, fear, hope, joy, uh, betrayal, you know, and that's why these fables are so powerful because they're just, they, they really, they get straight to the matter and they don't miss words. And, you know, these are, these are very good, obviously, for, um, it, it, you know, from what I could tell, there, there's so many, and I think the ones that are for kids, I've obviously, you know, they've been cherry picked in the sense of, um, you know, they're, they're the less, I think they, they seem to be the ones that are not quite as, maybe not quite as, as, uh, brutal, but it's just, it's definitely not all of them. I mean, like the popular Aesop's fables, I'm sure maybe like 20, um, you know, 30, but, uh, there are a lot more. There are a lot more. And um, this is one of them. Um, I don't think this is one of his popular ones, but, the, you know, this has got a really clear message. And it really, it resounds e e even now. You know, it's like, if you're the farmer, don't only show your teeth, but show that you have bite. You know, whether someone keeps harming you and you got to sue them in court because um, they keep, keep harming you and and you're like, look, I'm trying to be cool, but you just, you know, you keep trying to harm me. Like, I I have to go this route because, you know, I can't just, you know, if people know that you're, like, weak, then you, you won't, you won't, um, you won't really bite back or, you know, or, or bite at all, you know, then, then some people might take advantage over and over and over again. But then also, if you're the, if you're the cranes, you know, if you're going to be a taker, and uh, you're gonna run around like number one. You're taking a big risk, obviously, right? By doing people wrong, um, um, and continuing to go back and you know be greedy and just ha harming um people. But you know it's it's a good message because it's saying, look, you know you you can't just keep harming somebody um, because eventually they're probably gonna get fed up and uh, and perhaps rightfully so. Um, you know I think a lot of these stories too is they're. Um, there are a lot about just, you know, how, how to make the world right, you know, with these, these, these stories, these intimate stories with just a few characters, but, um, you know, animals, but, uh, you know, animals and humans are just, just animals, but also, um, just the fact that just how the world is, you know, how the world is. Yes, there are people out there that, that are just takers and they're looking for opportunities to take, take, take. And so, you know, so, sometimes if, you know, if, if you don't have any, any teeth, if they don't believe that you have teeth, that you will bite them, then maybe, you know, you'll be what they call a mark where they're just going to keep coming after you and, and, and trying to harm you. So, you know, it's really, you know, it's a good, 
it's a helpful story for children too because yeah, you know, I think we, we all know as we grow up, like the world is not sugar plums and gumdrops. Like you've got to be vigilant. You got to be careful of you know people taking advantage of you and and um, trying to harm you and and ha and having a really um, sort of toxic, ruthless, you know, cruel agenda. Um, you know, so it's these are fables, but they they really hold 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 their weight in the the human world today as well. Um, so, so yeah, you know, but, but once the farmer killed, killed these, these cranes, um, they ran off. I mean, they, they flew off so quick and presumably the epilogue to the story is probably that, that they didn't come back. They probably went back to, Li to Lilliput and they, they didn't come back. Um, so if words aren't good enough, if words aren't sufficient enough, if, you know, telling someone to please stop, you know, harming me or harming my loved ones you know, if that doesn't work, if you're trying to be nice and, you know, over and over and over again, you know, then blows must follow. And that doesn't necessarily mean you go out and harm somebody physically, but it's, it's an allegory, right? It's like a, it's kind of an allegory. It's like a metaphor, right? Like the rocks hitting these cranes and killing them in the human to human world, it might be like a lawsuit, you know, it might, you know, it might be, yeah. Yeah. So there, it, it might be something that, that goes through the proper channels of trying to make the world right, of trying to make, you know, to make this this pain stop from from these these folks that are trying to in, inflict uh, pain to you and or your loved ones and or your property. So, the farmer on the cranes, Aesop's fables. I, I like this story a lot. Thanks, guys.